Hello, <clears throat> hello there. Atheist Junior here, your friend and humble narrator. And I'm back with a brand new video for you guys. So we're going to be looking at a video from the one and only Kent Hovind, King of Low Hanging Fruit, where he poses the question, is evolution dangerous? Hovind. No, the answer is no. But uh, before we even get started, before I play the video, there's something that I need to address just within the question itself, because the question is based on a fallacy. So whether or not natural selection, the theory of, uh, bi the theory of evolution by natural selection, biodiversity, whether or not that scientific theory is dangerous does not have any bearing on its veracity. If a scientific theory has a bad outcome for humans, that doesn't make it more or less true. So anthropogenic climate change has a terrible outlook for humans, caused by humans, but it's very true. Although I'm sure Kent would disagree with that as well. But let's give him a chance to make his case and uh, I'll debunk all of his points. Hope you guys enjoy. All right. Mr. Hovind, why do you lie at the beginning of every video you make saying evolution is dangerous? Evolution is more than just a theory, it's a fact of science. And science is not dangerous. Why are you afraid of science? Well, first of all, I'm not the least bit afraid of science, okay? And evolution is not part of science. Evolution is a religion. People believe in it. You have to believe these animals can change to some other kind. Nobody's ever seen that. But here's why I believe evolution is dangerous. Almost every show I start off, I'll say, we believe the evolution theory is the dumbest and most dangerous religious cult in the history of the world. It's best classified as a mental illness. And you can see my creation seminar part five, which is in the bookstore. I had to order it at drdino.com. I thought I had, I had one here. Evolution is the foundation philosophy behind Nazism, communism, atheism, and the new world order. Evolution, <coughs> excuse me, Hovind. Um, let me take a sip of my, my, my juice. Sorry. Uh, evolution is the foundation philosophy behind atheism. That's a new one. I haven't heard that from Kent. I like how Nazism is spelled wrong. <laughs> so, um, my policy on this stream, we're going to try something. I, I'm not going to pause and debunk stuff that Kent says that we've heard a million times before that I've debunked a million times before. Because I feel like, you know, if you guys are watching my streams, you know some of his most repeated talking points. So I'm going to try and let the video play and wait till he makes sort of a novel claim that way where I'm not treading old ground. Uh, if that makes sense. Does that sound good? I think it sounds good. It's the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history. Okay, I have to. I'm sorry, I have to address this. Why keep Hovind relevant now his channels have been deleted? Just ignore him and let's, let him pass away quietly. Um, okay. That's not going to happen. Just ignoring Kent? When Kent got banned from YouTube, did he stop making content? No, he immediately made two new channels and he picked up putting out his videos just as if nothing had even happened. I mean, shit, most of his subscribers were fake anyway, right? I mean, maybe, maybe not, but the view counts didn't match the sub count. So he, he basically continued making content without a hitch and now he's on Rumble and you might say, oh, well, Rumble is just some... Uh, some offshoot alternative platform, but you know who else is on Rumble? Donald Trump Jr. And he has 1.5 million followers. So you can build a following on Rumble. It's a right-wing haven for people like Hovind, people like Stefan Molyneux, people that got kicked from YouTube for saying uh, stuff that's really controversial, it, like in a dangerous way and violating TOS, that they go to these sites, which become a breeding ground for these types of people. And... I just, I don't understand this mindset. If you're uh, engaging in like a, a battle against an enemy and you win a major victory, which I consider his channels getting deleted to being a major victory, is there a reason that you just stop at that point and just say, okay, well, uh, he's done. There's no need to engage further. It's not like Kent is operating a cult 
where people come every single day. It's not like there are 16 children currently at Dinosaur Adventureland. It, you know, it's not like he's still putting out content that is intended to brainwash people, including young people, and is working. It's not like tons of people still consider Kent Hoven to be an authority figure. It's not like he's still very popular. Like, I just don't get this. Also, I'm going to make the content I want to make. So, it is what it is. I'm sorry, but I, I'm just, I'm getting a little pissed off seeing these comments, okay? Just, just... If you want if you want to make a comment like that, suggest something else that you'd like me to engage with, okay? Don't just complain. Because it's starting to piss me off. Of the world. The Bible says a righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. But the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. See, when somebody's wicked, they can be unbelievably cruel. Tonight we'll just talk about Nazism, how evolution is the foundation behind what Adolf Hitler did. I'll show you. They loaded people onto train cars and killed them by the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions. Hitler thought the German race were the superior race that deserved to rule the world. The German Fuhrer consistently sought to make the practice of the German, Germany conform to the theory of evolution. Yep. He said, if evolution's true, the strongest should survive. Hitler told Himmler it was not enough for the Jews to simply die. They must die in agony. What's the best way to prolong their agony? Himmler turned the problem over to his advisors, who concluded that a slow, agonizing death could be brought about by placing Jewish prisoners in freight cars in which the floors were coated with quicklime, which produced excruciating burns. So, <clears throat> for some reason, Kent sees fit to put really disturbing images in his videos, so I censored them here. What is quicklime? Well, there's companies that produce it today to lime your fields, okay? Quicklime. But when you get it on your skin, it causes unbelievable burns, okay? Quicklime. He said, let's coat the cars with quicklime, lock the prisoners in there, and let them slowly die in agony. Advisors estimated it would take four days for the prisoners to die. And for the whole time, the freight cars would be left standing on some forgotten siding. Finally, it was decided that the freight cars should be used in addition to the extermination camps. Line them up, pack them in these freight cars with quicklime, leave them in there for four days, men, women, children, everything, and they all die long, agonizing, horrible deaths. Yes, folks, evolution is not just stupid, it's dangerous. How can a person do this to another human? Well, you have to believe they're inferior species, real simple. If they're inferior species, nothing wrong with killing them. This is the philosophy behind Nazism. Why did Hitler hate the Jews? No, Nazism talked about inferior races, not inferior species. So that's a fundamental difference. By genocide, the murder of hostages, reprisal raids, forced labor, euthanasia, starvation, exposure, medical experiments, terror bombing, concentration in death camps, Nazis murdered 15 to 31 million people, most likely 20 Point nine million. Men, women, children, handicapped, aged, sick, prisoners of war, forced laborers, camp inmates, critics, homosexuals. Eh, eh, pause. Homosexuals. Uh, so Adolf Hitler was the uh, Fuhrer or basically the president of Germany when this happened, correct? So that was the government executing homosexuals. Isn't that exactly the same thing that you want to promote in America, Kent Hovind? How is that any different from what you say? You think the American government should execute people for certain crimes. Matt Powell thinks that the uh, government should do that to drag queens. How is that, like, how are you gonna criticize the, the Nazis for this? You're a hypocrite, dude. Jews, Hovenfrit, Hoven sexual. Slavs, Serbs, Germans, Czechs, Italians, Poles, French, Ukrainians, and many others. Among them, a million were children under 18 years of age. And none of these monstrous figures even include civilian and military combat war deaths. Here is God's plan. God made the world, he owns it. He gives the order. It's a great, great Drake song. And he makes the rules. God said to fill his creation with people. First thing he said to Adam. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Go have a bunch of kids. Go have a bunch of kids. 
who cares if you just overpopulate the earth and there's way too many people and I didn't put enough resources for you just have an unlimited amount of kids, you know, 23 kids and counting. Hoffman. Obey his wise laws and live in peace. That's what God wants. Use the preaching of his word to win souls. Here's Satan's plan for the world. Deny God created, reduce the human population, disobey all God's laws and live in terror. Use the teaching of evolution to accomplish his goal. You have any evidence for that? Where did Satan say any of this in the Bible? Your kids go ape in school? Here's why. Misbehavior tops the list of what parents and teachers worry about. And that's exactly why such concerns belong. I'm pretty sure they're more worried about school shootings, but okay. Considering that what kids are not doing, what kids are not do being taught in school. In most schools, Johnetta and Johnny are being taught evolution. The humankind evolved from apes. Well, guess what? You teach them they're an animal and they act like animals. Can you prove that? How do you define acting like an animal? When I went to high school, they didn't have evolution in the curriculum because I went to public school in Texas. And when I was in high school, the president of the board of education was this moron. Uh, his name escapes me right now, but he debated R and raw and this guy was a dentist, and he said that evolution teaches that a spider came from a rock. So they didn't teach evolution when I was in high school. I didn't learn about it until later when I graduated, years later when I found R and Ra's videos. And guess what? There were kids who misbehaved at that school. I wasn't one of them. I was a model student. But how do you explain that then? What you believe determines how you behave. There's a direct correlation. Anybody with one functioning brain cell knows that. See, teaching of evolution is dangerous. It promotes bad science, for one thing. Nothing scientific about evolution. This is all from my part five. But it gives bad results. That doesn't mean that it's not true. It promotes the wrong philosophy of life. Man is an animal. No moral absolutes. There's no wrong philosophy of life. Philosophy is a field of study that is so esoteric and so uh, vast and vague, you can't say that there's one right philosophy of life and a wrong philosophy of life. That's ridiculous. I've asked people all over when I debate them, how do you tell right from wrong? If evolution's true, how do you tell right from wrong? Well, how do you measure this? That is a very complicated question. It's not something you can give a simple answer to. But I would say the way you tell right from wrong, the easiest way is to say, don't do things to other people that you would not want to happen to you. So like, I don't want to have my car stolen, so I don't steal cars. I don't want to get punched in the face, so I don't go around punching people in the face, okay? Like... Okay, bad example. I was going to say, I don't want to have my ass grabbed, so I don't go around grabbing people's asses. Maybe I do want that, but I have respect for people's bodily autonomy, and I'm not going to do that. So bad example. Hover. They don't have a ruler. There's no such thing as absolute right and wrong. Let's see. There are no more absolutes, and since morality is subjective, relative, and contextual, moral absolutism claims that certain actions are right or wrong, regardless of the context or the act. Which is ridiculous. That's true. You can't. <laughs> Moral absolutism is stupid. Oh, then. See, atheists don't have a right or wrong. They don't have a way to judge. Ask an atheist, well, how do you tell right from wrong? I'd just like to know. You folks are from Russia. Thank you for coming to visit today. We'll be talking about how evol evolution is the foundation of communism later on, maybe oh. next Tuesday or something like that. This okay, we have a super chat from Eddie Dean. For five dollars, it says, "Hey AJ, hope you're well. Any idea what happened during Kent's court date last December? Wasn't it his appeal to his previous conviction? Yeah, uh, basically, uh, he the whole thing got delayed again. Nothing really happened on that court date, but there has been a new lawsuit that's going to be filed by Cindy Lincoln. So if you want more information about that, this, so this is a new thing." Cindy is suing Kent Hoven, Ernie Land, and the other cronies at DAL for the 
bogus contract that they drew up for her. So I have a video about that where I read a Forbes article that your boy was mentioned in actually, which is pretty cool. So that is the latest update. Go check out that video after this one, finish watching this stream. Uh, and we have another one from exist is all for $5. It says I was homeschooled with a curriculum that was vehemently anti-evolution. That didn't stop me from acting like an animal. Well, praise God. This is what started it and all the suffering over there. Fresher, there are two choices. Somebody made the world or the world made itself. Nobody's thought of a third choice except a few morons who say, we're not really here at all. We just think we're here. Can you disprove that? Okay, you can forget about them. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But the textbooks teach the kids, you are an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. How many of the atheists I debated told me they're related to one? Let's see. Call me emo was related to a, 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 a bee or something. Mark Drysdale's related to a monkey. Jackson Rose related to a dinosaur. Yeah, what's his name's related to a strawberry. They really think they're just an animal. This evolution theory has ruined your brain cell. Your last functioning brain cell gave up. Oh, we're just an animal? Okay, let's act like animals. We uh, that's not how brain cells work, Kent. Brain cells live and die just like any cell. So it's not like you're down to one last brain cell that oh, gives up the ghost. Like, that's not how it works, dude. Teach the students or animals what effect does this have on their behavior? Is there any such thing as, are, are there any moral absolutes? The Bible says, he, Only a Sith deals in absolutes. He that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. There are... Um, yes, Brett King, I, ha, I saw this. I, I mentioned this on the Gur stream. Gur streams live stream yesterday I went on because I have a policy of not uh cottoning to brett keen i don't engage with him but yeah brett keen basically ripped off my video but instead of instead of reading the article he just clicked on the little button that has the like robot voice read the article for you which it's like anybody visiting the site could just do that themselves like what what value have you contributed to this video like so stupid okay uh from sebastian we have a super chat that says Hitler was a full on practicing Christian. Excuse me. Kent refuses to accept that evidence as, as well. Top point of shallow mind. We'll get to that. We will get to that. Oh, right. No, there are only, the only absolute truths is there are no absolute truths. Well, Paul, are you absolutely sure of that? Mm -hmm. There are no eternal facts as there are no eternal absolute truths. Nietzsche. Boy. Did he have influence Hitler and others like that, okay? There are no absolutes, and your way is neither the only way nor the right way, David Richards, Cosmic Ordering Guide. There is no such thing as an absolute truth to be discovered. This is the philosophy atheism and evolution brings on. Kids are being taught there are no absolutes. And I ask them, are you absolutely sure there are no absolutes? No, but what I am sure of is the fact that human beings have an extremely limited perception of our own reality. So what we can see with our eyes, if you even have vision, because lots of humans are blind, is based on the reflection of visible light. The visible light spectrum is a tiny sliver of all electromagnetic radiation that exists in the universe. A tiny, tiny sliver. I mean, the... Uh, what is it? There's a uh, pistol, uh, pistol shrimp that can see way more colors than we can. They have way more color cones in their eyes than we do. So we see a very limited perception of the universe because we can't visibly see radio waves, x-rays, gamma rays, any of that radiation. And there are tons of other things in the universe that we can't observe because of our limited perception. We can barely see out of our own atmosphere because of uh, light pollution, because of the air. So how do we know that our perception of reality is absolute? It's obviously not. And it's ridiculously arrogant to suggest that human beings have any idea about what
the absolute truth of the universe is. I'm comfortable with that fact because it's good enough for me to have human perception because it allows me to live my life and do the things I need to do. But absolute. See, if oh, the Lord says it, he, he said it a bunch. The more he says it in the Bible, the more true it is. Got it. That's absolute. In my book, I judge absolute truth by what did God say? He created it. He owns it. He can make the rules if he wants. Uh, Jacques Cousteau said, in order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people a day. All right. Now it's time to have some fun. Okay. So why don't we read an actual quote from what Jacques said? So this is a quote. It's terrible to have to say this. World population must be stabilized. And to do that, we must eliminate th uh, 350,000 people per day. This is so horrible to contemplate that we shouldn't even say it. But the general situation in which we are involved is lamentable. So he's not actually saying that he thinks we should do this. He's specifically saying that to even consider this is terrible and obviously not a realistic option. He's highlighting, in his opinion, how bad the problem of overcrowding, how bad the problem, the problem of out of control population growth is, how bad the problem of the lack of resources versus the amount of humans currently living on the earth is. It's an issue. That's what he's talking about. So he's not saying, oh, I want to kill this many people every single day because I'm a bad guy. Mustache twirling. No, stupid. Okay, Jacques. You go first. Mm -hmm. Ted Turner, the president of CNN, the Communist News Network, said a total world population of 250 to 300 million, a 95% decline would be ideal. Okay. So I couldn't find <clears throat> the exact quote where Ted Turner allegedly said this. Shocker. But here's some quotes from a different interview he did. Ted Turner told an overflow crowd Wednesday that the biggest problem in this world is too many people. I'm not talking about getting rid of anybody here, he told the nearly 400 men and women at the Strand Union building. I had five children myself, but one out of four people in the world don't get enough to eat or have access to clean water. It's not reasonable to expect we'll be able to continue <clears throat> to live so high on the hog when we're surrounded by so many starving hordes. Turner also said he put $125 million of his own money into a foundation to support environmental and population control effort in the U.S. and abroad. The endowment spends about $6 million a year on projects designed to lower the world's population from the present $6 billion to $2 billion or less. So again, what Ted Turner is talking about here is not just outright murdering a bunch of people to arbitrarily make the current population go down because he's evil. He's talking about making things better for future generations by slowing the rate of uh, by slowing the birth rates and slowing the rate that humans are depleting natural resources. It's not the same thing, and it's fear mongering to suggest otherwise. Wow. Okay. Ted, wow. Why don't you go second? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and kill yourself. Why do you want to kill somebody else? Go ahead and kill you. If you don't like it here, move on. It's inappropriate to say something like that, Kent. I can't imagine telling somebody else to go do that because they might listen to you. And I, I personally don't want that on my conscience. And it just shows a lack of empathy that you so carelessly would say that. I think it's very inappropriate. Okay. Eric Pianca, an unidentified woman at the University of Texas, following a recent speech before the Texas Academy of Science, Bianca endorsed airborne Ebola as an efficient means for eliminating 90% of the world's population. He received a standing ovation. Okay. So Eric Pianca himself wrote an article where he responds to claim, claims like this titled The Controversy Over Eric Pianca's Speech. And I'll have links to all of these sources in the description of this video. So I'm going to read an excerpt from this. In 2006, I was honored by the Texas Academy of Science, whose members bestowed upon me the title of Distinguished Scientist. In accepting this fine award, I gave a keynote address, keynote address on the vanishing book of life on Earth. Most of my talk was an appeal for respect of endangered species and natural habitats, and I deplored the all-too-common attitude among many humans that we are above nature and we can do whatever we want with natural habitats and other species. I compared the brainless runaway population growth of humans to bacteria growing exponentially. To underscore my point, I said that we are no better than bacteria. 
What this means, I pointed out, is that if we humans cannot find the will to control our own populations, microbes will do it for us. I concluded by discussing possible microbial agents and dismissed HIV as too slow, then suggested something that killed fast like Ebola virus might be our fate. I received a standing ovation by the audience of several hundred scientists after my talk, but a couple people with sour faces remained seated and did not applaud. These guys turned out to be creationists. For saying we need to reduce 90% of the population, that's got Adolf Hitler written all over it, doesn't it? Okay, Eric, you go third. If you don't like it here, go hang yourself or something, all right? Hitler wanted to reduce the population. He wanted to get rid of the inferiors. Let's kill those that we don't need anymore, make more room, more living space. How'd they say it in German? Lebensraum or something like that. More living space. Cut the world population and redistribute resources. Oh, Paul Elric. That. Hey. So, uh, I gotta. Uh, so, this article is talking about redistributing resources so that the poor people who have historically been denied them can start actually getting resources like food, water, access to medicine and education. I mean, are you against that, Ken Hoven? Because it kind of seems like it. So here's a quote from Professor Paul Ehrlich. I have a grim view of what is likely to happen to my children and grandchildren. Politicians can control the financial mess we are in, but they don't have control over the systems of the planet that provide us our food, our welfare, those are deteriorating, and it will take us a long time to turn it around if we start now. It's hard to think of anything that will pop up and save us. I hope something will, but it really will be a miracle. But he agreed with the Royal Society report that said human population and consumption should not be divided. They multiply together. You have to deal with them together. We have too much consumption among the rich and too little among the poor. That implies that terrible thing that we are going to have to do to is to somehow redistribute access to resources away from the rich and to the poor. But in the U.S., we have been doing the opposite. The Republican Party is wildly in favor of more redistribution, of taking money from the poor and giving it to the rich. So when this guy is talking about redistrib redistributing resources, he's talking about instead of uh, tons and tons of perfectly good food being distributed into a landfill, we instead distribute it to people who are less fortunate than us so they can actually eat it. Like, why would anybody be against that? That's what he's talking about with redistribution. Sorry, I'm. that's a really hard word for me to say. But I, I just like how the dude who lives on 200 acres of land is worried about... <laughs> Worried about, oh, oh, I'm not going to have enough of my resources. I'm not going to have enough of my stuff. Don't take my stuff. Oh, and, oh, and. Redistribute resources is code word for communism. Redistribute these nuts. Steal from the rich, give to the poor. Yeah. Take from those who work and give to those who don't want to work. Uh -huh. Welfare. That's redistribute. Uh, can, there are some people who cannot work. There are people who are disabled. There are people who do work, who were working, who got injured at their job and can no longer work. There are people who have many children and multiple jobs and are not able to work and need help. Like a long time ago, somebody called Kent out on his old radio show because he said that if you, uh, hid food stamps under people's working boots. They would never, they would starve to death, which is a very racist joke. And he has this attitude towards welfare that the only people that would ever receive welfare or any type of uh, social benefit from the government must be lazy. That's the only reason is because they just simply don't want to work. But Kent, you didn't pay income taxes for 20 years. You avoided paying uh, social security taxes. You structured your withdrawals. So you effectively took a bunch of money from the government. What makes you any better, Kent? At least those people who were on welfare legitimately went to the government and enrolled in an official program that's legal, okay? 
and they have oversight for receiving that money. There are stipulations where you have to be uh, actively seeking employment. You have drug tests. I don't personally agree with that. That's a whole other issue. But you just basically stole money from the government, Kent. So you are a hypocrite again. Okay, from Eddie Dean for $2, it says, I heard kids in the background of Kent's vid. WTF. Yeah, there's currently 16 children living at Dinosaur Adventureland. Tribute resources. Watch that code word. Paul, you're welcome to go forth if you want. Okay, take yourself out of here. Solutions from populationmatters.org. Although population growth in the 20th and 21st century has skyrocketed, it can be slowed, stopped, and reversed through actions which enhance global justice. Watch the way they phrase these things. And improve people's lives. Under the United Nations' most optimistic scenario, a sustainable reduction in global population could happen within decades. Reduce the population. How? All kinds of ways. How about let's spray chemtrails all over and see if we can reduce them that way? How about let's introduce things into their food supply that cause people to be sterile? Seriously? Chemtrails, Kent? Jesus. Okay, so um, populationmatters.org. Uh, yeah, I'll have the link to this and other sources in the description. But if you go to this website and you actually read past the part that Kent cut out on his screenshot, you'd see that they are encouraging reducing the rate that the human population is continuing to increase by lowering birth rates in countries in the global south, aka the third world. So what they want to do is reduce births that come from things like arranged marriages, human trafficking, and S-E-X-U-A-L assault. So why don't, uh, they're, pro they're proposing solutions, so why don't we actually read them? So solution one, empowering women and girls. Where women and girls are empowered to choose what happens to their bodies and lives, fertility rates plummet. Empowerment means freedom to pursue education and a career, economic independence, easy access to sexual and reproductive health care, and ending horrific injustices like child marriage and gender-based violence. Overall, advancing the rights of women and girls is one of the most powerful solutions to our greatest environmental and social crises. Solution two, removing barriers to contraception. Nearly half of all pregnancies are unintended. Currently, more than 200 million women who want to avoid pregnancy are not using modern contraception. Excuse me. Ho Hoven, sorry. There are a variety of reasons for this, including lack of access, concerns about side effects, and social pressure, often from male partners not to use it. These women mostly live in some of the world's poorest countries, where population is set to rise by 3 billion in the year 2100. That's 2100. So what? 80 years from now? Across the world, some people choose not to use contraception, contraception because they are influenced by assumptions, practices, and pressures within their nations or communities. In some places, very large family sizes are considered desirable. In others, the use of contra contraception is discouraged or forbidden. Work with women and men to change attitudes towards contraception and family size has formed a key part of, of successful family planning programs. Religious barriers may also be overturned or sidelines. Sidelined. And the third solution is quality education for all. Ensuring every child receives a quality education is one of the most effective methods for sustainable development. Many kids in developing countries are out of school with girls affected more than boys due to gender inequality. Education opens doors and provides disadvantaged kids and young people with a way out. There's a direct correlation between the number of years a woman spends in education and how many children she ends up having. According to one study, African women with no education have on average 5.4 children. Women who have completed secondary school have 2.7, and those who have a college education have 2.2. When family sizes are smaller, that also empowers women to gain education, take work, and improve their economic opportunities. And if you want to read the rest of their proposed solutions, you can check out the link in the description of this video. Let's see. World population, a plan of action. United Nations, population, to reduce the population. Okay, you all at the UN can get off anytime you want, okay? Why don't you go kill yourself? Don't kill everybody else, okay? Cut world population and redistribute resources. Oh, there we go again. Code word for communism. Global population reduction. I Googled this 20 minutes ago, folks. This is what they want. Human population today in 2000 was about seven or six, six billion. Last I heard it was seven and a half billion. 
The goal of the New World Order is to reduce it to a half billion. Satan came to Eve in the garden and said, Yea, hath God said, and she fell for the uh, Satan's trick. And the Lord, when he punished them, he said, Satan, because you did this, Ha ha, what a dumb woman. <laughs> thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between her, thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. Satan, it shall bruise thy dick. Satan knows someday some seed of the woman is going to bruise his head. And so he decided, I'm just going to try to kill everybody. And Satan is always working to reduce the population to zero. And God is just allowing this? Couldn't God stop Satan at any point? Zero. Yeah. Let's see. Remember when they wanted to kill the babies in Bethlehem? Want to kill baby Jesus? He slew all the children. Oh, baby Jesus, eight pounds, six ounces. Jewish tradition says Bethlehem's a small town. They said 22 babies died. And he killed all that were two and under. Because the wise men didn't come until probably Jesus was about two years old. I hate it when the wise men don't come. Oh, they don't shouldn't have him at the nativity scene. That's another story. Okay. Charles Wooster. People are the cause of all the problems. We have too many of them. We need to get rid of some of them. He wanted to ban DDT. Okay, Charles, you can go next anytime. Okay. Wasn't DDT like extremely toxic and harmful? What? So banning DDT? is going to cause more people to die and lower the population? I'd love for you to explain that one, Hovind. Bill Clinton had that face because he's married to Hillary. See. So, what? What? Stupid. Stupid. We must reduce the Earth's human population to one billion or reduce the standard of living to an agrarian peasant status. I bet you wouldn't plow the field, would you, Bill? I'd plow Hillary Clinton's field. <laughs> Hoven, hill dog, Hoven dog. Huh? You want agrarian status, Bill? No, you want to drive your limo with your chauffeur. Yeah, everybody else. Yeah, because you work so hard at DAL, right, Ken? Uh, you know who is a limo driver? Speaking of limos, Chris Jones is a limo driver. It's also where he uh, caught one of his charges, Ken in a limo. And I believe when you went and preached in California, he picked you up in a limousine, didn't he? Alvin. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> New sheriff in town. Has to be agrarian, but not you, I understand. Bill, you go ahead and go next, okay? Simulated res reserve and corridor system. This, this stream is too serious. Like this, it just needs some levity. Whatever tomorrow brings, I'll be there with Hoven arms and Hoven eyes, yeah. Whatever tomorrow brings, I'll be there. I'll be there. Do da do do da do do da ho hoven do da ho 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 hoven. Okay. To protect biodiversity. You can't go in certain areas because there are certain trees and frogs living there that we can't harm. That's the idea. Would you choose a hovind over wine? Yeah, folks, it's a, it's a back door way to try to reduce the population, okay? The <laughs> <laughs> back door? <laughs> I'd like to climb in Hillary Clinton's back door. These red areas are areas where no human activity is allowed. That's what they want, okay? Can't even go in there. Yeah, this was 20 years ago. Christianity is our foe, said Peter Singer. If animal rights is to succeed, we must destroy the Judeo-Christian religious tradition. Good. Do it. What? Our society would benefit if that happened. He favors killing babies up to 28 days after they're born, called post-birth abortion. Hey. Okay. Uh, so I have I have a clip from Aaron Ra's video that I'm going to insert here. If we're going to allow the mother to kill... <laughs> insert... <laughs> like a penis. Kill the baby 28 days after it's born. I got an idea. Let's extend abortion rights up until the kid's 18. How many parents with a teenager thought about it a time or two? Never mind. Okay. So, uh, just uh, based on my own personal history, I'm going to say, fuck you for saying that, Kent, because it's not funny. It's really not funny.
Peter, you go next, please. Okay, please go take take yourself. I, I hope I wasn't muted. I don't know. Take care of yourself. By the way, Peter Singer is pushing for abortion after the baby's born. He's trying to get legislation passed so you can kill the baby up to 28 days after it's born and still call it an abortion. Peter Singer only advocated that it would be merciful to euthanize severely disabled kids, those that are so deformed that they wouldn't live very long anyway, and that they would only suffer till the end. He argues that parents and physicians together should have the right to decide whether an infant's life would be so miserable or so devoid of even minimal satisfaction that it would be inhumane or futile to prolong its life. Case in point, conjoined twins where one of them is more or less healthy at the time of birth but the other is insufficiently developed and is thus parasitic, relying on her sister's heart and lungs to keep oxygenated blood flowing through a shared circulatory system supporting both bodies. According to the doctors, this situation could continue for a period of three to six months or a bit longer at the most. As the girls grew, the healthy one, who could live independently, would be unable to provide sufficient blood and oxygen to support both, and both would die. The dilemma, then, is that it was illegal to perform an operation that would directly kill one of the twins, but it would be immoral not to, because that would mean that both would ultimately die after months of pointless suffering. Dude, shout out to R and Ra. Like, I, I just wanted to say that I emailed Aaron um asking him just a, a few questions when i was writing my notes for this video and r and rock always helps me if i email him with a question about stuff he always emails me back like very quickly he's always willing to help out so just you know shout out r and raw i'll have a link to that video too but uh from deviant outcast i don't know what this currency is but it sounds like a lot kent's too ego egomaniacal to ever include others never mind he'd be fucked if it wasn't for others support complex long-term thinking the more people are thriving the more everyone's thriving forget it and hey, that's another good uh in incubus song is is megalomaniac i love that song bio edge after birth abortion this is what they want folks abortion after birth uh-huh yeah just there are literally parents who do kill their kids. Like their parents, there are mothers who have postpartum depression and like drown their babies. Like it's not, it's just fucked up to to say what he was saying there. Hoven has no empathy and he makes jokes that are crass. And like, I make edgy jokes. I have a fairly dark sense of humor, but the difference is that I don't, I try not to punch down with my jokes and there's still a line of good taste. I don't like humor that's mean-spirited, and that's all Kent does. All of his jokes are either lame boomer dad jokes or just mean-spirited jokes that are based on bigotry. Afterbirth abortion, infanticide. Afterbirth abortion. The world has cancer. The cancer is man, Greg said from the Rockefeller Foundation. I mean... Ken, you're giving me indigestion. Are humans damaging the earth? Yes. Is that a good metaphor? I don't see why not. So what's your point? Well, Greg, why, Alan, why don't you take yourself out? Okay. Why don't you stop suggesting that people do that, Kent? Because it's super messed up. Um, Prince Philip, the husband of Queen Elizabeth said, if I could be reincarnated, I would wish to return to Earth as a killer virus to lower human population levels. So apparently Prince Philip actually did say this quote. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty messed up. Is it any surprise that England, with its super archaic, outdated monarchy, would produce leaders that look at the rest of the human population, the rest of society, as expendable and basically just not having value and oh i want to return as the killer virus this is totally inappropriate for an, a, a public leader to say i understand that prince philip had a dark sense of humor but again he's in a role as a, a leader of the government over there and so this is ridiculous this is why a lot of people brought this quote up when the pandemic started. And so you got one, Kent, you got one quote right. 
that wasn't a total uh, bullshit quote mine. So, hey, we got one. We got we got one. <laughs> Houston, we have one. Wow. See this? Yeah, abolish the monarchy, bro. If you guys don't already watch Cosmic Skeptic, uh, he did an excellent video on uh, the queen dying right when she died. Go watch that video if you haven't seen it. It's so good. This is what evolution philosophy does. This is why it's dangerous. And Philip, you're welcome to go next, okay? If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Anybody know where that quote came from? Charles Dickens in what movie? Ebenezer Scrooge? Talking about the poor people. Why don't you, you're rich, why don't you help the poor people? If they'd rather die, let them do it and decrease the surplus population. That was in the 1800s. Ah, okay. Monsanto and other companies have tried to corner the market on food production with genetically modified foods. So, yeah, that was a quote from a movie. So it's not real. A Christmas Carol. And movies have simple plots that can be understood by children and typically have a good guy and a bad guy. And Scrooge was the bad guy in that movie. So it's, it's, it's like Mark Reed told you with the Green Mile. It's not real, Kent. But uh, I'll, I'll read a, a quote from enotes.com that I will, uh, somebody else's analysis that I'll plagiarize. So this statement reveals a couple of things about Scrooge. First, it reveals his cold heart. He would rather see poor people die instead of helping them. And by dying, they would be doing a service to the world by decreasing the surplus population. You must keep in mind then that when Charles Dickens wrote the carol, London, England was full with people looking for work. This was due to industrialization where machines were replacing people who worked on farms. So as they were replaced by machines, they began to flock to the cities looking for work. Thus, the city was overpopulated, which caused many problems and became a huge financial burden. Secondly, it reveals that Scrooge is a follower, follower of Thomas Malthus, who in 1803 published an essay titled Essays on the Principles of Population. His essay posed the argument that a man who is born into a world possessed, if he cannot get subsistence from his parents, on which he is, has a just demand, and if society do not want his labor, has no claim of right of the smallest portion of food, and in fact has no business to be where he is. At nature's mighty feast, there is no vacant cover for him. She tells him to be gone. Men like Malthus and Scrooge believed that war, famine, and pestilence were necessary in order to keep the population down, especially the poor people. So if you're not familiar with it already and you'd like to find out more about this, Google uh, Malthusian crisis because this is the idea that he proposed, which has more or less been debunked. But yeah, again, this is talking about uh, a movie where the guy is a comically mustache twirling bad guy. So not a real person, Kent. So... You can't use that as proof. To reduce the population. Yeah, it's all part of a plan. Special fruits and stuff that do all kinds of things to your body. Yeah. Injected with all kinds of stuff. That's another story. Seeds of deception. Genetically engineered foods. Anyway. Hmm. Chemtrails. 911. What are they spraying up there? It's not coming out of the engine. One atheist said, Hoven, you're crazy. Those are condensation trails. Look, I'm very familiar with jet engines and how they work. It's not a condensation trail that's not coming out of the engine. Those are chemtrail, they're spraying chemicals. Okay, that's another long story. Engine either. Fuck it, I'm done. I'm okay. done, dude. Stabilize the population. We got to kill 350,000 people a day. Mm -hmm. And see, this plane has four engines and is making six trails. Okay, you atheist morons. Explain that to me, all right? That's the inside of the airplane. Fine. Fine, I'll debunk chemtrails. Seriously? Like, I'm, are we really doing this, dude? This is what my life has become. So chemtrails, I'll put a link in the description that debunks this picture. These are filled with water to simulate the weight of a, a plane that's full of passengers so they can do tests without having humans on board and endangering them. These are not full of nasty chemicals that they're spraying, Kent. It's just water. You're so unbelievably dumb dude those are not passengers and that's not coming out of the engine 
Those are chemtrails they're spraying. That's another long story, all right? Remember in the Wizard of Oz movie, how they wrote the message in the sky? How did they write the message in the sky? Surrender, Dorothy. Yeah. I, does this man not know the difference between fiction and reality? All part of the plan. Yep. Let's see. If you go to the north of uh, at Elberton, Georgia, there used to be until last year the Georgia Guidestones. The Cherokee Indians said this place is the center of the universe. Uh -huh. Right there in the middle of no place. There's a huge blocks of granite. I love. I love this. This is. True pedantry. Scrooge did not have a mustache or a monocle. <laughs> you got me on that one. You got me. I went out there to see him. I said, man, look at this. The Ten Commandments for the New World Order. Set up by a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. Oh, let's be reasonable. Here they are, the Georgia Guidestones. Somebody blew them up last year or something like that. They said, number one, maintain humanity under 500 million. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a half billion. How many people are there now? Seven and a half billion. So that's obviously impossible. And again, somebody blew these up. So clearly they weren't that important. Yeah. This whole thing is loaded with Masonic symbols. And if you're Christian in the Masonic Lodge, shame on you. Okay, get out of that. Right? The Cherokee did not say what? What do you, what do you mean? Who's talking about Cherokee? I don't understand this comment. Okay. Declaration of Independence by the representatives of the United States of America. Hmm. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain rights. Did you see our Mrs. Vice? Oh, did the, did the Guidestones mention something from the Cherokee? I wasn't paying attention, honestly. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, the center of the universe. I was so confused. I, I honestly had, like, just my brain was just, like, not listening at this point. So we're going to be ending the stream pretty soon because uh, Kent basically just spends the rest of the video saying Hitler was an evolutionist. And I'll cover that a little bit, but then we're going to be wrapping the stream up pretty soon because I am getting very tired. Tired of your shit, Kent. His president give her a speech about, he, she said, yes, it's self-evident. Uh, all of you are endowed with certain rights. She left out the creator part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bill of Rights. Uh -huh. Congress cannot make a law that affects the establishment of a religion. You can read the Bill of Rights. There are rights we've got. Amendment number one, amendment number two. These guys felt like we were created and God makes the rules. And they established a very interesting government that's worked pretty good for 200 years. Yeah, slavery, apartheid, redlining, uh, gerrymandering, police state, capitalism. Oh. There are people who want to change it. Dave Barton has amazing stuff on that topic. Get a wall builder's website if you want more on that. Follow Dave, Dave Barton. So, uh, see, each every man out of apartheid, that's more in Africa. What I meant was segregation. If his own vine, his own fig tree, and drink water out of your own cistern. That's God's welfare program. If you don't work, don't eat. Yeah. yeah. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't grind, you don't shine. Everybody wants everybody else to work for them. The founding fathers had this. Everybody else wants somebody to twerk on them. This philosophy Hoping. that God created the universe and rights come from God. You get a bunch of those guys together, they will throw the tea in the harbor and start a big war. Yeah. Even when they had almost no chance of winning. Right. You're an animal. Share a common heritage with earthworms. Can atheists know right from wrong? Yes, atheists know right from wrong because the Bible says so. God's got it in their heart. They know, and you atheists know. There's a God. Quit pretending. First place, you can't be an atheist. You'd have to know everything to be an atheist. Wrong. And this is uh, simply ridiculous because if atheists know in their heart that God exists, how can you at the same time make this argument? Oh, well, see, Judgment Day, you guys are going to you guys are going to be sorry, Judgment Day. You're going to be sorry you weren't a Christian when you get sent to hell. Well, how can God write it on my heart that he exists. So even 
if in my own mind, I'm convinced he doesn't exist, I've actually been fooled and I actually know that he does, but I'm still going to get sent to hell anyway for not believing? That's not fair. How is that fair? And this is what I've been saying more recently is that, okay, I currently live my life as if your God does not exist, Kent. You currently live life as if he does. Which means if he does exist, it doesn't affect my life whatsoever. And if he doesn't exist, it also doesn't affect your my life, but it also doesn't affect your life at all. So he might as well not exist. Does that make sense? Or am I just an idiot? The best you could be is an agnostic, which means you're ignorant. That's what the word agnostic means. Look it up. No, it's okay? not. No, it's not. So every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit, Jesus said in Matthew. See, this evolution theory is the foundation behind all kinds of problems in this country, in my humble opinion. Humanism, Nazism, socialism, Marxism, communism. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There are two basic philosophies of government, based on evolution or creation. See, if evolution's true, laws come from man's opinion. Let's all get together and make a rule. Which is exactly what happens. That's, that is what happens. If, if creation's true, laws come from the Creator. Oh, I wasn't aware that Jesus Christ was up, you know, in Congress passing laws. I must have missed that. Rights are Pardon. unalienable. You can't put a lien on them. That is not what that word means. Inalienable is another way some people say it. No, that's the accurate way to say it. Unalienable, meaning that they cannot be stripped from a citizen. Not, you can't put a lien against them. What is that even, what? What? That's stupid. Government should be limited to the punishment of evildoers and defense. That's a constitutional republic. The government has no business being involved in welfare. That's a state issue or a church issue. So I assume you have no problem with state governments providing welfare then? And what churches are providing welfare? What's the difference? That's another long story. Okay. That's another long penis. There are two, two opposing philosophies of life. One, there's a creator. He sets the rules and goals in life. We should help the less fortunate, feed the poor and needy, and give to those in need. And I do. Okay? You do? When? <laughs> when? Prove it. I don't believe you. There is no God and only the strongest have a right to survive. Let them die and decrease the surplus population, Scrooge said. Okay. It's literally so reductive. This whole video has been like, there's two philosophies about this. There's two ideas about this. There, no, there's way more, Kent. The, it's just ridiculous. Evolution is the foundation philosophy for Nazism. See Hitler's rise to power. Bill Still, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, the money masters. Get that book. It's excellent. Or probably on YouTube by now. Okay. Mussolini, the Italian dictator, was influenced by evolution. He thought the Italians were the superior race. Mm -hmm. Mussolini and Hitler went together and said, hey, let's conquer the world. Hitler believed the Germans were the superior race. <clears throat> the German Fuhrer consistently sought to make the practice of Germany conform to the theory of evolution. He sure did. A direct line runs from Darwin, through the father of eugenics movement, Francis Galton, Darwin's cousin, to the extermination camps of Nazi Europe. Hmm. This year will go down in history. For the first time, a civilized nation had full gun registration. Our streets will be safer, our police more efficient, and the world will follow our lead into the future, Hitler said to the Reichstag. Huh. Hitler's book, Mein Kampf over here on the shelf, full of his racist philosophy, written in 1924, way before the war, his mind was captivated by evolutionary thinking, probably since the time he was a boy. Evolutionary ideas lie at the basis of all that is worst in Mein Kampf and in his public speeches. It said pubic speeches. <laughs> Hitler's pubic speeches. Oh, oh, Hitler did manscape. Oh. Oh, Heil Hoven, Heil Hitler, Heil, uh, Heil, pubes, pubes. Okay, um, I, 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 that joke didn't pan out. So this is bullshit.
um, this is a favorite of creationists to say Hitler was an evolutionist. And I'm going to restate what I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, but if evolution, even if it was associated with Hitler and Hitler liked it and believed it, that doesn't mean it's not true. But Hitler didn't believe it. So what Kent is trying to do is make evolution look bad through guilt by association in a direct violation of Godwin's law by saying Hitler believed in Darwinian evolution and put it into practice. So Mein Kampf talks about evolution in a cultural sense, a political sense, an industrial and military sense, but it never specifically talks about evolution in terms of biology. Mein Kampf never mentions Charles Darwin's name once. It mentions Darwinian evolution in terms of social Darwinism, but not talking about biological evolution. So again, why don't we look at what Hitler actually wrote? So in order to elucidate, I'm not going to do an accent. In order to elucidate this point of view, it may be worthwhile to glance once again at the real origins and causes of the cultural evolution of mankind. The first step which visibly brought mankind away from the animal world was that which led to the first invention. So this is Hitler specifically saying that he does not think that human beings are animals which you is in incompatible with biological evolution. The invention itself owes its origins to the ruses and stratagems which man employed to assist him in the struggle with other creatures for his existence and often to provide him with the only means he could adopt to achieve success in the struggle. Those very first crude inventions cannot be attributed to the individual, blah, 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 but because everyone who believes in the higher evolution of living organisms must admit that every manifestation of the vital urge and struggle to live must have had a definite, definite beginning in time and that one subject alone must have manifested it for the first time. So this next quote is, is fun. So you tell me, does this sound more like Hitler is an evolutionist or that Hitler is a younger creationist like Kent. Tell me who this reminds you of. Even at a superficial glance, it is sufficient to show that all the innumerable forms in which the life urge of nature manifests itself are subject to a fundamental law. One may call it an iron law of nature, which compels the various species to keep within the definite limits of their own life forms when propagating and multiplying their kind. Each animal mates only with one of its own species. The titmouse cohabit cohabits only with the titmouse, the finch on only with the finch, the stork with the stork, the field mouse with the field mouse, etc. Deviations from this law take place only in exceptional circumstances. This happens especially under the compulsion of captivity or when some other obstacle makes procreative intercourse impossible between individuals of the same species. So what he's effectively saying here is that speciation is impossible, which is fundamentally incompatible with evolution by natural selection. This is Hitler saying they, they bring forth after their kind. We've never seen a dog produce a non-dog. We've never seen a dog produce a non-dog. Heil, Heil Hitler, Heil Hovind. Uh, Hitler said, I can only hope and expect that the, oh, uh, that the other world, which has such deep sympathy for these criminals, talking about the Jews, will at least be generous enough to convert this sympathy to practical aid. We, on our part, are ready to put all these criminals at the disposal of these countries, for I care on luxury ships. Ro yeah, because I'm sure Hitler would have actually done that. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Roosevelt refused to let him come to America. Yeah, America was racist, too. Mein Kampf, here's Hitler's book. No more than nature desires the mating of street weaker with stronger individuals, even less does she desire the blending of a higher with a lower race. Adolf, who's a higher race? Hmm. Isn't that what evolution is? One animal evolves a little better than the rest. Now, what has to happen to the rest of them? Come on now. They got to die. Wrong. Or the new improved gene doesn't get to take over the population, does it? That's not how evolution works at all. That's a completely wrong description of evolution. You evolutionists are blind if you don't see how that ties in directly, okay? Historical experience. Well, then I guess I'm blind. <laughs> experience offers countless proofs of this. It shows with terrifying clarity that every mingling of Aryan blood with lower peoples 
was the end of the cultured people. This is what is so stupid because Hitler and his ilk thought that the way to get the best uh, population of people was if you bred within similar genetic groups. But what Darwin discovered is the exact opposite is true. And breeding within the exact same type of people causes inbreeding. It's diversity that is the good thing. So it, again, it's the exact opposite. Poland. Well, who's an Aryan? Well, Hitler was really big on this Aryan stuff. Yep. There's a bunch of them in prison today. Aryan. They're still Aryan nation people. And Hitler youth still going strong. And they are overwhelmingly creationists. Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hitler Youth. Let's get the superior race and take over the world. The Aryan Society. Hitler wanted to develop an Aryan racial state to dominate Europe and possibly the world. Aryans were described as blonde hair and blue eyed and the physical ideal of Nazi Germany. Blonde hair. <laughs> Blue eye. I'm sorry. This is the topic of this stream has been so serious and, and just unpleasant. I had to insert some levity into it. Like, I, I just have to for my own sanity. Physical specimen. Used to be. Okay. <clears throat> this is the list Hitler was going on. The Nordic, Norwegian, Vord, Stor, Tilly, Dog, Ufta, hey there, fella. Hey, Ole, bring me another fish and worm. Okay. Nordic were close to pure Aryan. The Germans were brown hair, blue eyed, or less desirable brown eyed. They were predominantly Aryan. Mediterraneans, they're slightly Aryan. Slavic, half Aryan, half ape. Let's wipe them out, okay? Oriental, slightly ape. Again, if this is what Hitler really thought, it just shows he had no understanding of what evolution actually taught because all humans are apes. So this is ridiculous. So you can't say that he believed in evolution and put it into practice when he clearly had no understanding of it. Just like you have no understanding of it, can't you moron? Black African, mostly ape. Jewish, close to pure ape. Yeah, notice how it says fiendish skull. The foundation of Aryan philosophy, at least a major part of it, was literally based on measuring the size of people's skulls. These people had nothing valuable to contribute. They were idiots. That's from the book Hitler Movement. This oh. is the... That's from, the, that's from my book, uh, The Bowel Movement, where I write a diary of all the fucking shits I took. Shut up, Ken. List Hitler was going on. Had he killed all the Jews? Hitler hated black people. They had death camps set up all over. Anybody that wasn't at the top of his list was going to go to a concentration camp and be worked to death. Sounds like Dinosaur Adventureland. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that, but it's funny. All right, I've had enough of you, Kent. <clears throat> like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. We just hit 7,600 subscribers. And 20 plus channel members. Big shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash atheist junior. Check out the tiers, consider subscribing on there and supporting me monthly for as little as $1 per month. It allows access to all of the content on there, early videos, uh, behind the scenes stuff, memes that I post, updates. We have fun over there. I need to update it more, but check it out. All of the links to my sources will be in the description for the stuff I talked about in this video if you'd like to uh, learn more. Um, yeah, and leave a comment telling me what you thought of the stream. I want to say a big thank you to all of the people in the side chat. Uh, there, We have 172 live viewers, so thank you so much to those people, and thank you to the people who sent Super Chats. And... I'll just see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this stream. And I love you so much. I kiss you. I love all my viewers. I love you so much. Bye-bye.